Global Hope Network International focuses on three main things. Uh, the first thing is disaster response. Uh, the second thing is long-term self-sustainable community development. We call this transformational community development or TCD. Uh, and the third thing is transformational leadership development and we do that through events such as the Geneva Institute for Leadership and Public Policy. Like most NGOs, during the corona crisis, uh, we couldn't do what we had done normally. We couldn't do uh, business as usual. So what happened was our staff automatically switched to disaster response mode. And let me illustrate this through the story of one of our staff, Oleg, in Tajikistan. Before Corona hit, Oleg was working in about six villages, but he couldn't travel to these because of travel restrictions within his country. So immediately, Oleg switched to education and prevention. More than once, Oleg heard people say, you are the only people to come here and tell us how we can protect ourselves from Corona. Then once late spring came rolling around, we did something to address food security. Uh, Oleg started doing what we call faith gardens. FAITH is an acronym, it stands for Food Always in the Home, and Oleg helped hundreds of families plant small gardens to provide food for them and their children. Then towards the end of the summer, Oleg wanted to complete a, a water project in the south, so he traveled south to near the Afghan border, and just as the, as the well was being completed, he came down with corona. Now Oleg's situation is a little bit complicated. Oleg is of Korean descent and an Uzbek national. Uh, his wife is an ethnic Russian, uh, but, but they live in Tajikistan. And so Oleg is not a, a citizen, so he was sent to the foreign hospital. And unfortunately, he received substandard health care. And he was sick with corona for two weeks. But unfortunately, he spent another five months he was sort of circling the drain. He almost died because of the poor treatment he received. And, and when he came back in the spring, he still was a little bit foggy. Uh, during one of our early conversations, he's like, I want to help these people, but I don't know what to do, Jeff. And, uh, and I said, well, Oleg, how about if we do uh, some faith gardens? He's like, yeah, let's do that. So, so Oleg went back, and this year, most families have elected to do potatoes. Uh, they, they realize that they really need to stock up uh, for the winter in order that they don't starve again next year. But it isn't just Oleg who is, who is helping uh, in Central Asia. For example, Han in, in Afghanistan. Uh, in 2019, he helped 60 families with trees. Uh, last year, he helped uh, over 300 families with faith garden and trees. And this year he's helping over 700 families with faith gardens and such. Also in Pakistan, our staff there, Salim, uh, at the beginning of the decade, he said that he'd like to get to 20 new villages, establish work in 20 new villages uh, in the first five years. Last year alone, he started in, uh, in 21 new villages. And it's just not in Central Asia. Global Hope is helping in more than three dozen countries around the world continuing our TCD plan as well as addressing uh, the, the corona crisis. But as we look at transformational policies for poverty alleviation and thriving during international crises, it's come at a heavy price. For example, of the eight national leaders that report directly or indirectly to me, six have gotten corona. Uh, the, these people were motivated uh, by love for the people that they serve, and by compassion wanting to help them. Uh, they put their lives on the line to help others. But Global Hope is not unique. There are many other amazing NGOs and entities like the UN and governments that have done so much to save lives. But what Corona has taught us is that you need to have a game plan, like we have TCD. Uh, but also, you need to have well-trained boots on the ground. And also, you need to be flexible to meet whatever comes your way. Thank you.